Today's episode is episode 194 of Unconventional Humans Podcast. Today's episode is called Tear Along the Dotted Line. On today's episode, if you're listening to this on Spotify, you might have heard the theme song to the series being played before this episode. I included that because I quite like the song and it's a feature that can include a theme song on Spotify. So if you don't listen on Spotify, you can check it out there and you can hear the Italian team song to this series. So this series is an animated series. It's available on Netflix. I watched it recently. I finished it recently. There's six episodes. They're short episodes, short and snappy episodes. Between I think between 18 to 22 minutes long, I think each of them are. I just wanted to talk about today what I appreciated when I watched this series. It's actually a very deep and profound series, but it's done in a way where there's there's a lot of laughs. I found myself laughing quite a bit in this series. There's quite a bit of philosophy in the episodes, but it's done in such a way where it feels like philosophy can orient you in life, it can help you, but at the end of the day, you can't not live and life is difficult and life will hit you in the face regardless of what philosophy you understand. So there's a, it's kind of a dark humor to it, I guess, in that sense. But I'll just give a few examples. Like in the first episode, just even in the introduction, see the thing with, with this series is that it's originally in Italian. It's dubbed in English. I watched the dubbed in English version. It They've done a good job of it being dubbed in English. You wouldn't even notice that it was Italian, other than the fact that the surroundings are Italian and the writing is in Italian. So the, in the start of the series, there's a piece of graffiti on the wall that says in Italian that it's useless living on the outside if you're dead on the inside. And I think that kind of summed up this series for me. It really explored... Zero is the main character. And all the episodes are... It's a first-person experience. So, Zero, what you get from this character is that he's a person who is solipistic. So, this is a word that I came across recently in when I was reading more existentialist books. Solipsism. It's another word for saying self-centered. So Zero, he lives in a world where he's the center of the universe. It's a very egocentric way of living. But when you watch him, he's very relatable because his self-centeredness is actually driven by anxiety and a sense of depression that life isn't working out how he wanted it to work out and that life is actually much more difficult than what he thought it would be. So there's a relatability to it there. For me, anyway, looking at that, there's a lot of things I noticed in the way he behaved and how his brain behaved that, that I could relate to the way my brain behaves if I let it run riot with me. In this series, there's an armadillo who is his conscience. So his an armadillo is a manifestation of his conscience. The interactions between him and the armadillo are actually quite funny, but... They're also if they're also quite sad because again I could relate to that nagging voice in my head that puts me on the wrong path or is too tough with me. So sometimes the armadillo actually helps Zero to see through his own bullshit. There's one episode where he's in the toilet in the train and he's still giving out about the train being so cold. And the armadillo, what he does is he comes into the scene and he gets him to acknowledge that it's not about the train being cold and to admit out loud that he just fears thinking about where he's going to. He doesn't want to think about that, so his mind is focused on the cold, coldness inside the train, even though nobody else is bothered by it, so it can't be that bad. So... That was one situation where the armadillo helped him, but oftentimes what the armadillo was doing was that he was actually catastrophizing something that wasn't actually an issue. So in one of the episodes, it shows zero. So I probably should have said this at the start. I'm not going to give away 
some of the main things to the series. There's one thing in the last two episodes that I didn't even realize that this is what the storyline was about. So I'm not going to give away that part. So, But there are probably going to be spoiler. So spoiler alert. It's a bit late now, I guess. But spoiler alert to some of these things that I'm possibly giving away a few things. But I'm not going to give away some of the main things to this. So you don't have to worry about that. But there was one scene where the armadillo, when Zero was a a child in in the classroom, he thought that the teacher, he was the center of her universe. So when he was doing bad, he was making her feel bad. And the armadillo just actually fueled that belief that wasn't true. His friend Zero was actually the person who grounded him more in that she actually made him see that the teacher didn't give a damn about him, that it's that she often actually called him by the wrong name, that for her, the te- teaching was a job. It wasn't that he was a center of her universe, but the armadillo actually got him to believe in that more so that he catastrophized the situation where I think the teacher's giving him a, a bad grade and he actually put flames to the, he put fire to the kind of, Flames are already kindling in his mind about it being a catastrophe and him letting her down. So I can relate that as well as a child that when you're a child growing up, you can't help it but think that you are the center of the universe and that when you do bad things or if you get bad grades, then you're letting people down. And that's a big burden on on a child, especially if they see that, I guess, in the feedback in the surroundings, that it might actually reinforce that that you can reinforce that belief that you can have that effect on people. I think what would have helped me with those more rational beliefs that I can have that effect on adults, that I can let them down, I think what would have helped me would have been communication with adults that that, that isn't the case. So that's something I'd be aware of today. I think that's very important that that children know that They don't need to have a burden of somebody, of an adult's feelings on top of them. But if they do, it's more the adult's issue and that the child needs to do things for themselves. That is important to, to do. It's important to do your best in life, but adults need to come to terms with their own shit. And uh, I think it's good to have adults who are in a position where they can talk to children and help them see that if their brain is thinking that if they do things that let the adults down then they're responsible for that then that isn't actually the case i think it's just good to communicate that as often as necessary to children that would have helped me and i was growing up that didn't have to carry this unspoken burden of responsibility that wasn't actually real What I got from Zero was that the self-centeredness, he wasn't the guy who who thought he was the center of the universe in the, in, the, in the sense that he was great and everybody else is a bit piece character to his life in more than a narcissistic sense. It was more that he was just so anxious and he had such high expectations of himself and he had a brain and a conscience that catastrophized things that it worked against him a lot. He actually lived in his own world far too much. And he actually missed out on some of the bigger opportunities in life to connect with potential love interests as well in in these series that would have made his life better. But his conscience and the way his brain was operating, the kind of anxiety he was driven by and the sense of depression, actually stopped him it made him believe in irrational thoughts and stopped him from actually connecting with the person in this series in it that he wanted to connect with he was too afraid i guess of the vulnerability of that and uh, i think a layer before that was actually he had to see through his conscience telling him bullshit and that's a hard thing to do when that's the only voice that's in your head so this 
series deals with some very heavy topics, but it does it in a very... I found it was a very light-hearted way they did it in. So I was pretty impressed at the way they did it. And because his brain is so anxious and he jumps from story to story, the series is quite snappy. So the episodes are very snappy. There's It goes from one scene to the next quite quickly. And just the way his brain connects things, he can jump from one. So in one, again, in another scenario, he had the option of, of ordering a new pizza. And he made a huge mountain out of that to the extent that he even thought about Plato's cave, the person in the cave looking out into the unknown world and the overwhelm of that and he just tied that to a pizza because in his mind the catastrophe was that if he got a new pizza he didn't like it and he wasted his pizza but if he didn't get it and it was nice then he'd missed out on the unknown and he's always limiting himself so he couldn't win either way in his mind he was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place the other thing i found interesting in this series was that some of the some of the characters were animals, so it kind of reminded me. I watched a little bit of Bojack Horseman, and in this series, as well, I don't know why they had some of the characters that were animals. The one thing I did think about was that his mother was a hen. She was a clucking hen. That's what I could look at. That's what the way I saw her after a while. And for me, that just represents a metaphor of a m- mother who... A mother who's just clucking away. She just thinks about what she has to say to other people about her son. Rather than being there for her son and listening to her son. That's what I got from his mother being a clucking hen. That is a hen. The way she would talk, she was kind of clucking on. And like there was no heart to her. It was just clucking. And that's what I feel like maybe the clucking hen as a metaphor for but that's something that I, I've made up but that was something that the only thing I could relate to was Bojack Horseman in that there's characters that are animals and characters that are humans and it doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be a distinction really between them they would they would I think in Bojack Horseman they would refer they would they would acknowledge that that's a cat but didn't there was no there was no distinction that you couldn't have a relationship with the cat, but it's a strange one. I guess this is why animated series are, they can be interesting to explore. I usually wouldn't watch animated series, but if it's something that's touching on themes like this that are of a more of an adult nature, even though, to be fair, there's a lot of animated series that do touch on things that are adult nature, I guess it's because I just really could relate to the character here, especially in my younger years when I let my more anxious brain run me a lot more and affect the big outcomes of my life. really appreciated this series, that it could kind of spoke to me that way. I guess the, the one main question I want to leave you with from this series to ask yourself, something that I'm asking myself, is that if we admitted to ourselves some of the things we wanted to stop ourselves from thinking about, would there be less pantomimes in our lives? Would there be less dramas in our lives? Would our lives feel more peaceful? So that's something that I think is, is worth contemplating. That's that's what this series is telling me to contemplate a bit more. So that's it. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can leave a rating and a review to the podcast, subscribe on YouTube. If you want to get my new book, uh, the Edge, Finding Your Creative Edge, The Journey from Plato's Cave to the Artist World. It's available on Amazon. Link is in the show notes or under the video on YouTube. So that's it. Thanks again for listening, and I will speak to you on the next episode. <laughs>